Oh, no. Is he going to do a Bible story lesson? Gosh, I wish he would just stick to the Sphinx has closed his eyes stuff, you know? Now, don't worry. I'm not doing Bible story lessons because if I did that, it would make it appear that I think I'm a teacher or I have pastoral skills when, in fact, I'm just a prophecy student who has still more questions than answers. But I will say the two answers that I have, they're home runs because he led me to them. He led me to those answers. And so they are faithful and true, just like he is. Uh, Oh, the shelves. Yeah, I put up some shelves because when people see shelves in the background of these videos, the person doing the talking just looks more trustworthy. He has shelves, okay? Sturdy, reliable. And I, and I wanted that uh, component because it's also true that when people see a senior citizen wearing bumblebee yellow colored clothing, they get repulsed, okay? There's a natural revulsion to seeing that. So if during this video you get a little queasy, just focus on the shelves for a few moments and it'll pass. Now, the title of this video is going to assure me that I don't get many views. It doesn't, it's not sexy. It's not, you know, in, in, the, in the spiritual sense, it's, it, it doesn't have it. There's no it factor in that title that makes people go, oh, I want to hear what that's all about. Now, I have a small channel, and that's, I'm, I'm fine with that. And I, I want to talk to the people who actually watch my videos because something's coming clear to me. I'm beginning to see a pattern, and I'm sometimes the most uh, oblivious person you know. So it takes a while for sometimes for me to see something that's going on. And this past week, uh, I've spotted something, and I want to talk to you about it. Now, when you see that one of my videos has like generally around 2,000 views, there aren't 2,000 people who watch my videos. There's about 200 people who actually watch the whole video. There's 2,000 people who come and watch for a few seconds or a couple of minutes and move on. My, my group is about 200 people. That's tiny in YouTube numbers. It's huge in real numbers. If 200 people came over to my house tonight, it would be a mob. I wouldn't know what to do. It's a responsibility. But you have a responsibility too, and I'm going to show you what I think it is. And I think there's a reason you came to this channel And that's not to pat myself on the back. Please know I am not going to do that. But I'm seeing something uh, kind of form as we go along. And I want to bring it to your attention. Just to put this thing in context. He has given me two thoughts. Didn't hear a verbal voice. I heard I had two thoughts that led me to the two truths that I know. The three event lines. Oh, I was so excited the morning he gave me that. I was so excited. And I, you know, it happened between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. And so there was no way I was going back to sleep. But I didn't have anybody to tell. I wanted to tell Keith, my friend in L.A., but it's, you know, it's 4 a.m. back there at 6 a.m. here in Texas. So I, I went over to my sister's. She had as a, uh, or did at that time, had an art gallery, and she lived above it, and I had the key. So I went in and I waited. I just waited. And I heard her come down the steps. And when she opened that door, I said, get some coffee. You're not going to believe what I found. You're not going to believe what he showed me. And then I just vomited it out to her for about a half an hour. And when I finally finished, she said, okay, when you, when you do the video, you need to make it a little clearer. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Oh, I was excited. That was in April of 2021. And then in March of 2022, He gave me another one of those crazy thoughts. It just came in. It was calm, but authoritative. And it just simply said, as I was thinking about, puzzled over the seven letters to the churches, what is going on here? It's a snapshot of today. Uh, Oh, I, I, I was like very grateful that that question, which had been plaguing me for a long time, was finally answered. Oh, it's to the end time, church. That makes sense. As I went on days and weeks afterward, I started realizing that wasn't just a little answer to a troubling question. 
what in the world are those seven letters to those extinct churches doing in the book of Revelation? It came with a responsibility. And the responsibility is, oh, I now have to believe it. I actually have to believe what the Lord is saying to the churches. He's not saying them to some, oh, you know, 2,000 year ago churches or to the churches in general throughout the ages. He's saying it to the end time church. I've got to accept it. And let me tell you something. That's tough. But I found the more I believed it, the easier it was to accept because it, you don't need to believe that he gave me this special thought. What I'm teaching about that thought, it self-validates. All you have to do is read the seven letters, and they could only be to the church on the earth just before the tribulation began. The church of Philadelphia would go into the tribulation if he didn't intervene, if he didn't step in and keep them from the hour of testing. He tells Sardis, I'm coming as a thief on you if you don't watch. So he's coming on to the church either as a rescuer or as a thief, and that can only be right before the Great Tribulation begins. And that's the and the overarching, the overarching message that he has is this. Now, this is in the last chapter, of the book of Revelation, where he turns back to the churches and he says, I Jesus have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. It's to us. And the churches are no longer some uh, indiscriminate group that we don't really can't quite really. Fo- it's us. He's talking to us. And he says these things are coming soon. As a matter of fact, in that last chapter, he mentions soon four different times. He's not kidding. He's not kidding. But you know what the problem is? It's fine when we talk about Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming soon. And he'll, he, you know, if it could be in our lifetime and he's returning and we Maranatha and all of that is great, but it's easy to accept when it really isn't urgent and immediate when it's urgent and immediate. Well, that's a different story. So Jesus was on the road back to Lazarus, well, his body. And on the road back, Martha approaches him on the road and in a passive aggressive way says, you know, if you had been here, Lord, my brother would still be alive. And Jesus said, your brother will rise. And Martha says this, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So she was fine about a resurrection as long as it was the one the Jews believed in at the last day, or perhaps Jesus taught her that, whatever. She was fine with it because it was, you know, in the future sometime. It was going to happen, probably not in her day. So she was fine. She's fine with that. But when he told her, no, I'm talking about now, Martha, today, roll away that stone. Ooh, then it got real. Then it got real, didn't it? I mean, when you that's not something they did back then. Roll away a stone in front of a dead man's tomb. And so did Martha say, stand back, everybody. The Lord is going to raise my brother. No, she says, Lord, by this time, he stinketh. I love the King James Version there. It's the only time I use the King James Version. She's saying, Lord, he's, he's dead. He's dead. Don't roll away the stone. He's, he's dead. See, she couldn't embrace the, the immediacy of what he was going to do. She could accept that it was going to happen down the road, but right now in front of us, that's the same problem I had and many of you may have with this new understanding that these letters are for us. We need to embrace it. We need to get past that standing outside Lazarus' tomb going, really, today? Really? He means it. He is coming soon. That's a fact. Not not down the road. We're waiting for some other stuff to happen. He is coming soon. And if we aren't watching, he will come as a thief. This is the most exciting news the church has had since the Holy Spirit was given on Pentecost. This is what the church has been waiting for. It's happening right 
before us. And we've got to do something about it. It, it can't just be an interesting little teaching on a YouTube video. This is real. This is as real as rolling back the tomb. And he's asking us to accept it and to do something about it. Maybe it's the last little chore we do for the master. But we've got to do something about it. The question that's hanging in the air is, why did he, why did he give this thing to a nobody like you, Stan? First of all, you're right. I'm a nobody. In the, in the, you know, we're talking about in, the, in church hierarchy, not in front of God. We're somebody. We have standing because of Christ Jesus. But, but I am a nobody. But I, I want to make sure you understand this. When I posted that video, when I first learned that, when I was given that thought, other people on our channel came forward and said, oh, I already was taught that. I was already led to that very thing you're teaching now. So if a few people in my channel had already been led to it before me, extrapolate that around the world. That's a whole bunch of nobodies who are getting this. Why in the world, though, would he give it to a bunch of nobodies? Why wouldn't he give it to, uh, you know, a mega church pastor who has a tremendous radio and TV presence? He could get it out. He could get it out, but he didn't. Now, I don't know the mind of God completely, but I, I think one of the things is that if, let's say, John MacArthur or David Jeremiah, one of the big names, got a hold of this and saw that, oh my goodness, the seven letters are to the church today on the earth, and he started teaching that. We would go, that's fantastic. He'll get the word out. And we'd be done with it. You know, we'd be happy ourselves, but we don't have to get involved. I think he's saying, I want nobody's involved. I don't want to trickle down. I want it to trickle up. I want you to get involved and do something. If you, if you believe it. Now, you, you have, some of you have wiggle room. You can say, Look, I believe the seven letters to the churches are to the end time church. That's clear. I got that. I'm just not as sure as you stand that we are right there yet. Okay, then keep watching because you need to and pray for discernment. But I don't have that wiggle room. I was told it's today. It's a snapshot of today. That means all of the promises, the threats, and the warnings in those letters and that last chapter where he turns back to the churches, active hot. I don't have it. I, I've, got to, I've got to receive it or I'll be the biggest fool that ever lived. But if you do believe that we are just about to enter the events of the book of Revelation, and maybe we're seeing a couple of the preliminary events taking place right now. If you believe that, then you have to believe what he's saying to you. And we need to do something. And I've tried. I've tried. Because um, I knew I, I, a couple months ago I was burdened with this. I see how important it is. Again, it's the most exciting news the church has had since Pentecost in the first century when the Holy Spirit was given. And, and I thought, i got to get this to somebody big, bigger platform than mine. So I, I made a special video for Derek and Sharon Gilbert over at Skywatch TV. I love those guys. To me, they epitomize what a Christian couple is supposed to look like. They're passionate and compassionate, and they're high IQ people. And I thought, you know, I know it's going to be tough to teach a teacher, but these are the two that I think have the best chance to listen. So I made this little video, and I stuck it in a, an overnight delivery thing and sent it to them. Never heard it back. Not, not one peep. And believe me, do you think when I was heading to the post office I didn't hear this in the back of my head? Oh, look at the king of the prophecy nut jobbers. He's going to share his insights with uh, Sharon and Derek Gilbert like they don't get about 50 of these every month. Usually they're handwritten page after page after page, angry handwritten with a lot of capital letters and a lot of exclamation points. Oh, I heard it. <laughs> I heard it. But I had to. But nothing happened. I was disappointed. But a few nights ago, I was thinking about it. I think it's just him again saying, I'm not letting you off the hook. Because I, I, I told Derek and Sharon Gilbert, look, don't, I, don't give me credit. Other people already came to this you know, fact about the seven letters. Don't, don't mention me. Just take it and run with it, and I'm out of it. I really did. I felt like that would fulfill my obligation. But I think we're supposed to do something else. And I think that something else is to take this truth 
to the circle of influence that we have, to your family and friends. Yeah, yeah, you're going to hear the same thing I heard. Oh, I'm not going to look like a nut jobber. Jesus is really coming this time. He really, really is. You have to. Every Christian on earth has the, has the right to make a decision about that, to hear it. We want everybody to hear it. And, and so that nobody can say to anybody, gee, if I'd only known. Or, in some cases, we'll find out that the person you are talking to about this is, in fact, a member of the Church of Philadelphia, and now they can have joy about the, the, the fact that he is coming soon, and they can now spread it to their circle of influence. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Yeah, that sounds like a, a good idea, Stan, but to be honest, Stan's plan stinketh. <laughs> and I'd agree with you. I would agree with you. It stinks. But if he is involved, it won't stink. It won't stink. Yeah, I, I, I can't see it being successful. I, I, you know, maybe, maybe few people, you know, but if he is involved, and this is what he wants, it'll bear fruit. As unlikely as it is, one of the smallest operators of a YouTube channel trying to get a few people who actually believe that he is coming soon to go out and spread the word to their area of influence. No one is asking you to get on a plane, go to a foreign country, learn a foreign language, live in a village where they worship a different God, and try and convert them. That's work. That's work. This is just putting a little of your pride and ego on the line when people might roll their eyes. Oh, come on, Sarah, please. Those seven letters were sent to seven specific churches in Asia Minor. They're not for you. The whole Bible's not about you, Sarah, Tom, Bill, Mike. Yeah, you're going to hear some of that. But you might also hear, that makes all the sense in the world. Oh, my aching back, you're right. Doesn't matter which one of those you hear is if he wants that done, we, we need to, to do it. That's, that's it. You know, I was listening to an interview with a couple of sisters who are Christian music makers. I, I don't follow Christian music. I hadn't heard of them. They were wonderful young women. And, and, and I guess they're popular. And the interviewer said, well, how do you, how do you, you guys go all over the world and do conferences. How do you decide where, where you go and what you're going to do? And, and they said, early on, we realized if a door opens and it looks like a no-brainer and it will clearly benefit us, we don't go <laughs> because it's not his door. Because if we go through it, something bad will happen. When he opens the door, it's the one where you go, really? When we go through that door, it bears fruit. And, and that's what I'm, I'm saying this situation is right here. I think the whole process of this channel has led to this. And I'm telling you this, if we don't do it, he's going to give it to somebody else who will. Can you imagine that? On the last few whatever, months, weeks, days, seconds, couple of years, whatever is left of time, he gives us one little duty to do. And we go, no, I'll pass. No, I, I can't do that. I, I can't do that. We, we have to do this. I'm going to, I'll, and here's what I'm going to do. Okay, now I think it's better when you go personally and, and talk to your friends and family, church, family member. Maybe there's a, an associate pastor at the church that's approachable. Whatever. Get ready for rejection, but do it anyway. But there might be some people that just acquaintances, and you don't feel comfortable picking up the phone and suddenly talking about the seven churches of the book of Revelation. In a couple of days... I'm going to make a very succinct video giving the best case that I can as to why the seven churches of the book of Revelation is to the end-time church, are to the end-time church. Those letters are to the end-time church. I'm going to lay out that case, and I'm going to try and do it between seven and ten minutes. And then you can just send the link to those people you don't feel comfortable personally approaching to say, this is something that a lot of us are beginning to see, and it is a really interesting development that I just thought of you, and I thought you should hear it. And we're done. I'm not going to har harass or hound people. If they don't want to hear it, they don't have to hear it. This is not a salvation issue. This is not going to change their salvation, but it might change the direction and trajectory of what happens to them over the next few years. Yeah, because he's holding open the door 
to the Church of Philadelphia. He is not trying to exclude people. He has set aside some time for the church to repent, in, in some cases for what it's doing, and start watching so they can get into the Church of Philadelphia. He tells the Church of Smyrna, some of you will go into prison for 10 days. Who goes into prison for 10 days when it's, you know, that kind of, uh, when, you're, when you're being harassed for your faith? It's usually a lot longer than that. What he's saying to Smyrna is, you won't be there long. If they put you in church, uh, jail, they won't be, I, I conflated church and jail, isn't that funny? That's kind of interesting. If they put you in jail for 10 days, you won't be there long. He's coming. He's either coming to rescue us or he's coming as a thief. Either way, we have to get that out. And I think we should do that. I will have that film up. I'm not trying. This isn't some scheme on my part, by the way, to, to get a viral video. If I had a viral video this week and it got a million, first of all, the video I'm talking about, it will not go viral. Whatever the opposite of viral is, that's what it'll get. Because a lot of the other people who just come, come and go, they'll look at that title and go, he's already made that point. I'm not going to watch that. You know, it, it, if it, even if it did go viral, my views would go back to 1,000, 2,000 the very next week. I'm not in it for that. I think you know that. I never ask anybody to subscribe or give me a thumb. I don't do any of that. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in possibly maybe for one time in my life doing something that pleases him and helps my brothers and sisters. Let's try this. I think this is a door he wants us to go through because nobody else is doing it. Nobody else is telling them. The big guys don't know anything about it. They're teaching the same stuff they learned in seminary. And something new has come to our attention because the Holy Spirit is releasing this information. And it is the most exciting news the church has had in 2,000 years. Behold, I am coming soon. What he's waiting for is the Spirit and the bride say come. In other words... The bride has moved on from, really? Roll away the stone, really? Today? Has, has gone past. Are you, are you talking about soon, soon? It, like soon, soon, like the way I understand it? Has moved past that. And standing alongside the Holy Spirit of the Most High God says, with a knowledge of, come. Even so, come Lord Jesus.